Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm going to attempt to create a, an abstract, sort of abstract, um, mixed media painting on an A4 shallow gallery wrapped canvas. Now the caveat there is attempt. I'm not by nature um, a painter, so this is going to be a kind of experimental play using indigo blue paint. So the colours that I'm going to be using today are going to be Pantry White, which is a, an off-whitish colour. I'm going to be using the Metallic Vodka Martini Silver. I may be using Black Gesso, the Gesso Good, but I also may decide to go with the Raven Black instead, which is a metallic, almost... Um, almost like hematite, so like a, a silvery, blackish, deep grey, but this is metallic. For the main colours, I'm going to be using Postbox Red, Banana Custard and Burning Bonfire. So these are some nice autumnal colours. So I'm going to begin by giving the canvas a coat of the Pantry White. So literally going to go all over the canvas with that pantry white, including the sides. So because this is going to be a bit of a repetitive process, you've seen me start it, so I will jump to the end where it's all complete. Okay, so now that the canvas is all dry, I'm going to open up the vodka martini, which sounds really, really yummy. And I'm going to add a little bit just onto my glass cutting mat here. And then a little bit of water. Not a huge amount. And then using a fan brush, I'm just going to mix the water into that vodka martini paint. <sighs> See, I've already got a little bit of dust on it there. And then just using the fan brush, I'm just going to go all over the canvas. Just dab in that silver paint. I think that will do. So I'll just wash the brush. Give it a quick blast with a heat gun, and I'll be right back. I just noticed that I don't think my video camera picked up that last step, so I'll just explain exactly what I've just done. So I've taken the Raven Black paint uh, instead of the Black Gesso. I wanted to keep with that kind of metallic -y effect. I just give the pot a shake up so that collected some of the paint in the lid. I then took a sponge, a natural sponge, took a little bit of the paint from the lid, worked it into the sponge on my craft mat and then lightly went across the canvas with that Raven Black. So hopefully you haven't missed that much, it's just really the application of that Raven Black onto the canvas. And as you can see it's now all dried. Modern technology, who needs it? There we go, okay. So, the next step for me is to grab some masking tape. So, masking tape or painter's tape, whatever you want to call it, wherever it is in the world that you live. So, we have, or I have, two different widths here. So, I'm going to take a strip, make sure it's completely long enough, put it at a slight angle, Do a straight line, but make sure it is at a little bit of an angle. I'll go around the edge. Another one straight down. So make sure there's enough to go all the way over the canvas edge. 
then take a wider one like so Make sure it's pushed down as best you can without pushing too hard because you do want to be able to take this tape off again later. Another piece, again at a slight angle. Over. And one more. I would say about there. the edges okay so we're ready for our next step so what I need to do is I need to bring out the three paints that I want to use for my background or for my main paint color or covers if you like so I've got burning bonfire post box red and banana custard. Okay, so back to the paint. So we have burning bonfire. So I'm going to take some of that burning bonfire, put it onto one of the paint mats. Just give that a quick wipe. To one side, then I'm going to take the post box red, do the same thing, and the banana custard. Okay, so there are my three main colors that I'm gonna be using. I've also got some glazing medium from Windsor Newton. Now my nozzle is clogged up I've just discovered so I'm going to pour some of that just onto the mat a couple of places so I can easily pick up and blend with the paint. So I'm going to start off um, with a largest brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of that glazing medium and a tiny bit of the paint. I'm just going to mix it together and then I'm going to randomly go over with the paint. And then I'm not bothered about a little bit of contamination, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of the orange. And as you can see, I'm starting to blend the colours together. Now this is um, almost like a blusher brush. And all I'm doing is just lightly going over the top of the paint. And as you can see, it's just softening those edges. It's 
between the colours. And I'll keep on adding just a little bit of that paint. Blend and soften. I think some of that tape is starting to lift, so I need to give it a bit of a dry. It's getting a bit too wet. Okay, I'm now going to switch to a smaller brush and just start adding in some more of that colour and just blending out with the brush strokes. The more varied in the background you can make it the better. And don't forget you can add in colour later with it being acrylic. Once it's, you can dry it and then go back in and add more over the top. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop the brushes into the water, grab the heat gun, dry that and then we can finish off adding in and adding some highlights where we think they're going to be needed. Okay so that's dry, just need to go back in now and start adding some of that paint on the edges just to bring it all together. And then where I want some definite redder tones, I can just add a little bit of red 
just in. Again, starting on those edges. of the colour. Just vary it and mottle it as much as you can and then I'm going to just make sure I've gone round and caught every last corner. I apologise if my video camera is struggling to maintain a focus being so close. I think I've pretty much got all of it all the way around. So I'm now going to give that another blast and I'll be right back. Okay, so do you remember that um, natural sponge? So I'm now going to take some of that yellow and I'm now just going to go over and randomly add a little bit of the orange. Just kind of break it up a bit. Just adding a little bit more texture into your background. I apologise for the clicking noise. That's just the canvas on my worktop. Okay, I think that'll do for that for now. So I'll give it a quick blast and then I'm going to clear all this paint away and I'll be right back. Okay, next up I'm going to bring back that pantry white. I'm going to add some of that onto the desktop. Grab some more water, give it a little bit. The fan brush that we had earlier, I'm going to mix that with the white and that water just to give us a nice little bit of a runny consistency. And then I'm just going to flick over the top of the canvas. Done. Give it a quick wipe up. And then give it a blast, and then we're going to be ready for the reveal. Okay, so the moment of truth. I'm hoping that when I remove the masking tape, what's going to be left. Is going to be and the last one. I 
<laughs> right, abstract silver birch trees in an autumn woodland. So just sitting back and looking at it, I've decided that I think it needs to have the tree trunks uh, a little bit more defined. So I've just got a detail brush and I'm just going to go down each one and just add a little bit. Make it a little bit more irregular. And that's going to help just to define it a little bit better. less of a straight edge. Of course, making sure, don't forget the edges. So I'm going to carry on and do those and I'll be back at the end. So I'm pretty happy with that canvas now. So all that remains for me to do is just to sign it and date it. And I'm calling this complete. <laughs>